J Dude here. Special episode of the Jammin' Dude Show. And of course, my co host. Hopefully, you are all having as wonderful of an evening as I am. Just got back from the fair, and uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about grunge. I had a lot of feedback on my Galactic Cowboys episode talking about how grunge had taken away so many opportunities from so many good bands. I am well aware of this. And a lot of comments about the grunge backlash, as it were. I wanted to go a little bit more into this. I wanted to reach out to all of you who are really music fans, and I wanted to plead with you for a moment. Because the record industry has been doing this to us for a very long time. But grunge itself is not your enemy. It's not the music. It was the politics. There are lots of musical genres that were... that had its genesis at a point of honesty. And any time music is made out of honesty, it doesn't really matter. A lot of heart can make up for not necessarily having a lot of musical ability. And not to say that grunge bands didn't have musical ability, just that most of my audience and most of the bands that I listen to, we listen to progressive rock, something that's known for its high level of musicianship. Bands like Yes, Dream Theater, em Emerson, Lake & Palmer, King Crimson, but you know darn well every single one of you has one of those bands that just simplifies everything. Uh, even early on, for me, it was ACDC. ACDC seems to defy everything that I tend to love about music, which is more complex arrangements, not keeping things on a steady beat. Uh, I have an old saying that 4-4 four, four is a bore. But for some reason, at the age of 10 years old, ACDC just lit me up and made me want to do this. You get me? Punk rock was kind of a backlash of a sorts when uh, progressive rock in the 70s was starting to get a little bit too pompous. Uh, it was that reminder that sometimes things just had to be kept simple. And it didn't matter if you couldn't play a million notes a minute. In that way, grunge was very similar to the punk movement. It was honest. And let's face it, in the late 80s, a lot of rock and roll was becoming extremely corporate. Hair metal in the early 80s had actually started off as kind of a cool little thing. Some of those early 80s hair metal bands were doing it just because it was, that was what they wanted to do. There wasn't really a lot of hope of, maybe there were dreams of making it big. But then the record companies came in and they found out they could make money off of it. And then suddenly you had a bunch of cookie cutter hair bands coming around. And when it got to the point where record companies were starting to put bands together, which, let's face it, they've always done, it became a corporate run entity. Something had to be done. I feel somewhat honored to have lived in an area where the perfect storm took place. I feel sad that most of the rest of the nation never really got it. A lot of the people around here were not really trying to hit the big time necessarily. Maybe some were. Which brings me to the second point of what I wanted to say in all this. What you think is grunge, and what the nation refers to as grunge, to somebody who was here when it all happened, that's not really grunge. You see, what got the buzz going, if you ever go back and listen to those early sub-pop recordings, find those early records from Green River, and uh, it's later... Uh, Mud Honey, the first couple Mud Honey ref 
records. You listen to the Melvins. You listen to Nirvana's Bleach. Not Nevermind. Uh, you hear Soundgarden's Fop EP. And, and this, this is early grunge. Find it. This, this is Soundgarden. Find this. Those early recordings are really the honest place where all of that came about. Everybody was sick of corporate run rock. And we somehow along the way forgot that what rock and roll was supposed to be was a bunch of guys getting together in their garages and just playing their asses off. And there was something very honest about it when it first came about. And it was that honesty that really struck a chord with us here in the area and, as it turned out, with the rest of the nation. There is nothing wrong with that music. What happened was, what happens any time the corporate policy finds that they can make money off of something. You see, to the rest of the nation, grunge exploded with Nevermind. But to us here in the Seattle area, grunge kind of hit its peak with Nevermind. And then it was kind of all downhill after that. You ask a Seattle person, at least a Seattle person who was there at the time, who was there when lightning hit, and they aren't going to point to the later albums that made millions and made bands famous. They're not going to point to Dirt by Alice in Chains or Bad Motorfinger. They're going to take you back to Ultra Mega OK, or they're going to take you to Super Fuzz Big Muff by Mud Honey, or something from Tad. That is where the genesis of grunge really was. That is what made grunge what it was. That is what put the buzz on the map. And I encourage any of you who have never heard the early era of grunge, go find those albums and let them spin around in your head a little bit because there's something really honest about those albums and it was something that was desperately needed in the rock world in the late 80s when those things were coming about. Go into it with an open mind. Don't prejudge because you don't like it when other people prejudge your music either. No, you're not gonna hear a million notes. No, you're not gonna hear a lot of time changes but you are going to hear some really frustrated, honestly frustrated young men who are pouring their heart and soul and blood and guts into their instruments. So, I urge all of you who have prejudged grunge because of what it did to every other genre of music in the 90s, I want you to please remember, grunge is not the enemy. It was the corporate politics that killed grunge and killed every other genre of music. So, that's my rant for this week. More album reviews coming up. And, uh, hey, when I went to the fair today, got this really cool Seahawks cap, and I want to show this off to you. See? Everybody see that? I thought that was pretty cool. So, till next time, guys. Hang in there. Keep rocking out. Send me your reviews. Send me your. Uh, send me all your comments. All comments are welcome. And uh, go Seahawks. If you want to check out and see how this same style of thing was actually going on in other parts of the country too, check these guys out. This is a band from Texas. 
and their debut album came out in 1989, two years before Nevermind, and they are called the Buck Pets. This is one of the most unsung bands that were really coming out with the same style of music before it was ever even called grunge. This is kick-ass garage rock. You need to find this album. 